Ladies and gentlemen, the Shred Gaming Citycom video. If you're on a budget and you need a GPU, well, it's possible we might have a GPU just for you. NVIDIA's GeForce GTX 950 supposedly launches next month. Now, it's not exactly a super duper powerhouse as you'd probably expect for a graphics card that's going to be around the 150 US dollar range. I mean, that compares just for those wondering to the 200 US dollars of let's say the GTX 960 but it should be fairly reasonable even so and by fairly reasonable you'll understand what I mean in just a moment so the card is going to have and feature 768 CUDA cores, 48 TMUs and 32 ROPs so for point of reference there's 1024 CUDA cores in the GTX 960 and this thing can boost up to 1450 MHz, supposedly, at least according to the leaks. Now, the base clock is up to 1250 MHz, the usual caveats of it depends on the board partner, it depends on the will of the gods, and so on and so forth. But this card should be quite interesting because it's only a 90 watt TDP. And it's got all the normal crap as well, like Dual Link DVIs and HDMI 2 and DisplayPort 1.2. Now I admit that not many people are probably going to find super duper use for you know display port 2 on a card like this necessarily but I do feel that gamers probably will like this card or stream monsters are going to want this card in other words those who are doing 4k streaming buying it for like HTPCs that type of thing simply because well it's low power probably low noise and all of the other bits and bobs. Now in terms of memory bandwidth and stuff, it's slightly below that of the GTX 960, but not that much. It's only um, still putting out 128 bit memory interface, two gigs of RAM, obviously GDDR5, running up to 6,750 6, megahertz. So memory bandwidth, depending on the clocks, but the uh, interim is, well, the average is supposedly about 108 gigabytes per second, which compares to 112. So it's not too bad, really. Now, the real point of this card, of course, is that NVIDIA haven't really got a 900, a 900 series uh, GPU, which is competing in this um, pricing arena. And while many of us are really focused on, let's say, the Titans, or the Furies, or the, you know, the 980 Ties, that type of market, there is an awful lot of consumers who just either don't need that amount of power, can't afford that amount of power, or plain need a card for a different purpose. For sake of argument, at work recently I've just um, bought a bunch of graphics cards which are like uh, GTX 750s or 750 Ties, for GPUs for basically for use of very light rendering slash export times and other bits and bobs and we don't really need anything that powerful but we do need a little bit of extra performance and therefore just because we got really good deals on these cards they just happen to be the best kind of price slash performance that we needed uh, this is non RGT related by the way and obviously once again if you're running in like a media theater for example or you need a gpu for something that's not particularly taxing then it's a really good card maybe for example portable systems i think personally it will be very very much and i'm ignoring amd for a second not because you know their cards are bad in this range they've got actually quite a couple or quite a few which are actually really good in the price point but putting it up against the obvious one the gtx 960 it's a bit difficult to know whether it's going to be worth the additional 50 us dollars ish i mean you can get the gtx 960 um the um in the uk for around 150 160 great british pounds marks so you can do the math on what it's going to cost for the 950 but Let's take the 950 versus the 960. Looking at the specifications alone, it's kind of weird because in memory bandwidth constrained applications, it's quite possible that the 960 won't be that far ahead over the 9. Uh, sorry, the 960 won't be that far ahead over the 950. But obviously, the additional amount of shader power is actually quite substantial. And because the Maxwell architecture is so bloody efficient, it's possible that 
we're still going to see quite a bit of difference between the two cards anywho. As for 2 gigs, I don't really think that that's a problem. I mean, come on, 2 gigs on a card with this level of performance. It's not really like you're going to be targeting like 1440p or above anyhow. So, you know, whatever really. It's a good card. Um, AMD, of course, are facing a lot of competition at the moment. For example, you've got the R7 370, uh, which is about the same price range. Obviously, once again, it does depend on the vendor, whether it's MSI, a a Asus, and custom coolers, and any of that jazz. But there's a lot of competition, and there's a good reason for it. It's a very lucrative point, uh, price point, to be totally honest. Anyway, it's also an article which you can go ahead and check out. It's linked in the video description if you want more information. But for now, I'm going to get going. Hopefully, you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.